guys, what percentage of copywriters are actually good? Like, how can you tell people are, you know, good at what they do? And how many people are just, I don't know, a bunch of phonies? All right. What is this? Catcher in the Rye <laughs> holding coffee? A bunch of phonies these marketers are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's a really, that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, I don't think there's a perfect answer to this. There's not a, I couldn't give an answer in a percentage. I will certainly say that it depends where you're looking online, because the first time I ever got exposed to copywriting in the sense that I, I then knew what the word, like the word was being explained to me. It was first explained in the sense of anyone who writes stuff online is a copywriter. So content, uh, journalism, blog, like blogging, sales copy, like that was, that was the extent of copywriter. And like, how can you measure the effectiveness of that? <clears throat> Surely it's subjective. So for that, when you start looking at that, like sphere of just looking at everyone, how can you even measure that? When we look at sales copy, which is kind of what we're in and you can go niche to niche you can go market to market i'm sure as sean has spoken about before like in the financial world there's only 200 or so people who are even making decent ish money as a financial copywriter so you know that's kind of that gives you an idea in terms of people i have met who identify themselves as copywriters i'm gonna i'm gonna be biased here and say this but the niche communities that i've been in online that's where i find the good copywriters when i after I kind of broke out of that weird like bubble um, and I started connecting with more people on LinkedIn and I started seeing that word copywriter again, similar to the first time I'd ever found out what it meant. Um, you know, people saying, oh, I'm a brand copywriter. Even people saying I'm a conversion copywriter, people plastering copywriter over the LinkedIn. I started to realize, okay, this is kind of just a buzzword at this point for a lot of people to put on their LinkedIn profile and say, I understand copy. Most copywriters, I would say on LinkedIn, again, and this is just anecdotal from what I've seen, most copywriters who say they're a copywriter on LinkedIn have not worked on an actual campaign where they've been able to measure results. They just do content. They just do blogs. They maybe do social media posts. I'm not saying there's no benefit to that or there's no merit because there is. It's just that the way that we talk about copywriting and the question that's being posed, which is how many people are good, how many people aren't, my bet will be the majority of people who say they're a copywriter aren't even writing the kind of copy that we talk about that can be measured and that can objectively be called good or bad. All right. So like, I'm just going to give an answer and I'm not going to explain it. It's just a feeling. It's what I think is, and it's 0.3%. That's it. 0.3% are good. Yeah. 0.3% of all copywriters are good. That's more stringent than me. Uh, my, my answer that I'm not going to explain is, um, Sturgeon's revelation, 90% of everything is bullshit. So I'm going to just use that <laughs> and apply this to this situation as well. 90% of people who say yeah. that they're a good copywriter or marketer is actually bad. Now here's the more nuanced explanation. When you're a good copywriter or marketer, you tend to ascend quickly. And because you're getting results that tell you you're good, you tend to listen to those. Imposter syndrome goes away pretty quickly when you're actually good. And when you start to see results that show you that you're good, the people that are good grow. They get put into higher and higher positions. Guess what? There aren't a whole lot of seats on the bus for people in higher and higher positions, just as there aren't that many seats in the world for A-list copywriters. And so one of the things that happens is, you know, there's a little bit of survivorship bias going on here. The, you know, how come it seems like everywhere I look, somebody seems to know what they're doing. You, bro, you don't, like, you haven't spoken to the junior copy, like the 150 junior copywriters sitting at like an ad agency in Portland who have been struggling to like grow their career or mm -hmm. ascend out of the cubicle or whatever. I'm being rhetorically, I'm exaggerating. And so like, all you're seeing are the people that did break out, that did have some modicum of success, that did either through sheer dint of skill, talent, or you know, lucky circumstance, they became the thing and found a platform that allowed them to speak 
in a way that other people would listen. I feel fortunate that this show is the platform for us because we all, you know, combined like not only are sitting on our laurels, but are actually still like in the, the thick of it and like still growing, which is, I, I think, a cool thing that differentiates us from a lot of other gurus where what you'll find is that those people, they had some success in the 80s, 90s and aughts, and then they stopped writing copy for businesses. And then they started talking about their own methods that they used to get successful 10, 20 years ago. And then they become a guru. And mm -hmm. guess what? It's it's easier and more fulfilling to like write copy for yourself and for your own courses and for your own programs. It's more fun to get onto a stream like this than to sit and bash your head against a sales letter that is just not coming together for a guru that just does not want to play ball with the claims that you want to make. Writing copy is hard. Mm -hmm. Writing copy for yourself can be fun. And so like, of course, the all these like gurus wanted to make that transition once they had enough success under their belt. And so that, that's my thought on the matter. Like I, everywhere you look, you know, what you're looking at are people that like, you know, the cream of the crop, they rise to the top or better yet a Terminator, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> that's all you see. Uh, but like beneath that, like is this wide swath of other people that are struggling, that are trying, that are probably very good at what they do and don't want the limelight. One of the things that I did with the interview series that we've been running is talk to people that like aren't in the limelight, like uh, my interview with Bridget or Oren, for mm -hmm. example. They have found a great deal of success. They are on the top of their game. They don't give conferences. They don't like they don't show up to masterminds and things like that. They just make money. They just shut up and make money. And those are the people you really want to listen to because they typically don't have, how do you say, a particular angle to sell you. Like, for example, I'm thinking about uh, other systems or like um, RMBC or, or, you know, other like templatized or, or, or other things that, that really work for like a particular guru and say, because that's just good copy. You need this thing in order to succeed. Whereas, uh, like, in all likelihood, chances are it's more nuanced than that. Mm. But you're not going to hear the nuanced thing from the person with something to sell. It's like the non-guru is not going to try to shoehorn you into a specific mold or, you know, formula or framework that you're supposed to use. They're more likely to give you an unbiased answer, right? Yep.